Okay, I am I am recording. So those uh, there are many people that signed up, and many many of those, in fact, by far the majority, are uh, wanting to watch the video later at their convenience. We have busy schedules today, and that's great. Um, I wanted uh, y'all to know from me right here at the beginning. It's a uh, I'm I'm honored to be uh, a facilitator of the class tonight, and I'm going to share um, about 43 slides and some thoughts along with those uh, that you can save the video and use it later in a class or whatever you like. It's just a way to encourage and share and, and uh, teach and have fun, but I like it to be interactive. So I want you to, uh, things that you notice, uh, I want you to bring up. Now I've been teaching a Wednesday night class for many years now. And uh, this is, this class has been so much fun and there's 40 or 50 people in the class most Wednesdays. Um, I have a sub when I'm out of town, but uh, what we do is just read through the Bible. And right now we're in the book of John. And uh, I have some slides on every chapter in the Bible. And, and uh, so I've, I've organized those by chapter. It's 1,192 PowerPoint presentations. And um, uh, they're a lot of fun. Um, we just say, what'd you see new this week when, when this chapter we're going to cover tonight? We're actually in John 14 and that. And so I've saved those over the years. I add uh, slides every day. This is kind of my study method. Um, I, I create PowerPoint presentations because that's how I did in business all the years that I owned a technology company. And uh, I, I then go through my slides and noticed uh, uh, themes and recurring things. And that's how I write my books. I do the slides first. So I actually have uh, between nine and 10,000 slides. I make more slides every day because it, it's, I said, that's my study method. So um, I, I'm going to share the chapter with you. Uh, and by the way, the chapters that will be shared. Uh, on this, you're going to see what I have, but also if you if you're a subscriber to stevehempeltoday.com, uh, it's a subscription fee. I think it's 50 a year. There's a whole bunch of PowerPoint presentations that you get on spiritual warfare, and we're going to start adding all these uh, chapter uh, slides that we do each month on the. Um, uh, turn off my phone, Jim. I'm trying to figure out how to do that because it's not even on, and I can't mute it. Sorry about the chime. I'll have to figure that out before the next. Uh, Everybody, time. don't text Steve. Huh? <laughs> I said no one's allowed to text you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it pop up, and I just can't figure it. It's not even open, and it's still chiming. I don't know why it does that. I got to figure out how to turn that off. So forgive the chime this week. I'm going to do a share screen now, and uh, I will pause several times along the way and just say, anybody got a, uh, something to add to this now or whatever? I'll pause, and, and we can you know, give you an opportunity to discuss. Um, but I'm going to just go through these. Um, and, and I get to certain points, I'll stop and say, anybody got something they want to bring up and Tracy will help watch for that and throw questions at me so we can uh, discuss. Maybe it's this, maybe it's this iPad that's doing the chiming. Okay. Uh, chapter one, Matthew. Um, I've just said this, but our format is interactive. I want you to Enjoy this and bring up things that you've noticed too and share with the group. Um, I want you to know as you go through the slides this week and every week, this is my um, color code system. You'll see these color codes in every slide that, that I uh, present. There'll be background pictures a lot too, but I use a bold black for God and Jesus, and I use red for sin, spiritual warfare, evil, uh, making the decisions between right and wrong, those kind of things. I use green for prophecy, fulfilled and unfulfilled. Uh, there are mainly uh, two main categories of prophecies, first coming prophecies and second coming prophecies. There's about 119 or so first coming prophecies. There's about 330 or so second coming prophecies. Uh, my book on heaven came about partly because uh, now, I researched uh, on the first coming prophecies how many of those were literal and how many of them were symbolic, thinking that would help me uh, understand the second coming prophecies with heaven and eternity involved. And I was very shocked to learn that 100% uh, of the first coming prophecies were literal, and that made me rethink the second coming prophecies, the ones that are yet to be fulfilled, where Jesus returns and we live with him forever and many other prophecies. So those are very interesting, and, and it becomes even more interesting in some of the Old Testament passages. We'll talk more about that as the weeks go on, but you're going to see some specific prophecies about Jesus in this chapter one of, of Matthew. I use blue for uh, 
actually heaven and the Holy Spirit and angels and eternity. Uh, I use gray for anything to do with women in Scripture. Uh, women are treated very differently in the Old Testament than they are in the New. Um, in, in the Old Testament, they were primarily just property. Uh, they were owned by their dad until they were married, and then they were owned or ruled, or whatever you want to say it, by their husband. Uh, vows weren't even um, valid unless their husband agreed to them. Uh, and then Jesus changed all that for women, changed, and they were um, uh, equals in, in many ways. We have different roles. Um, women have babies, men don't, and there's uh, church roles for women too. But uh, I use gray for women, and it helps me notice things I wouldn't notice otherwise. I use purple for baptism, and I use orange for creation, or if you want to say creation versus evolution ideas. I use a burgundy color you see there for the literal nature of Scripture, and we're going to especially see some things tonight in the generational stuff, the generation things in, Genesis, in Matthew uh, chapter 1. And then I use brown for covenant relationship, covenant connections. And I'll elaborate on that a little bit as we go along over time. But uh, watch for those colors. Black for God and Jesus. Red for sin, spiritual warfare. Green for prophecy. Blue for Holy Spirit, heaven, angels, eternity. Gray for women. Purple for baptism. Orange for creation. Burgundy for literal. And brown for covenant. The first part of uh, Matthew 1 is the, talking about the genealogy of Jesus. Uh, this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Notice the Tamar in gray. Uh, that's very unusual for a woman to be named in the lineage of, of Christ. You'll see some more in just a moment. We have the brown color notice for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Perez, Aaron, the lineage goes through the covenant relationship. Um, record, I put record in red because a lot of people think the Bible is just symbolic and a lot of good information, but not a you know, literal truth of God. It's a record. So it's a, if you believe it's a record, you, you're trusting God. And if you say, well, it's just generalities about the past. It's not necessarily covering all the descendants. Well, it looks just like it is. Wording wise, it is. And then you see the green there, Messiah, descendant. Of, of David. So Jesus is the Messiah, and he is a descendant of David. That was predicted. We'll see more of that as we go along, uh, and so that's why I use the green color. Uh, verse 4, Ram was the father of Aminadab. Uh, Aminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, father of Obed, his mother was Ruth. Obed, father of Jesse. Jesse's the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba, the widow of Uriah. Now, of course, you have three women uh, listed here. Rahab, who was a hooker, and that's interesting that that would be listed in the lineage of Jesus and of David. Ruth, who was a Moabite. She wasn't even uh, an Israelite, and yet she's not only integrated into the um, lineage of Jesus, but also um, a, a woman of faith um, from Moab who was converted. And, and so her being listed, not even being an Israelite, is also interesting. And then Bathsheba, who, who um, you know, she was the mother of, of Solomon, and uh, that was a sinful, adulterous relationship, and yet God even listed them and let them be part of it. And Uriah was her husband, who, who David killed. Uh, David, a man after God's own heart, uh, made some big mistakes, and that's some of them, but it didn't keep them out of the lineage of Jesus. I found that very interesting. So on the timeline we're looking at here, uh, from about 2100 B.C. to 1000 B.C., Matthew 1 covers from Abraham to Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Perez, Hezron, Ram, Amenadab, Neshon, Salmon, Boaz, Obed, Jesse, and David, and Solomon. Um, some of the graphics you'll see in this, in this week's presentation is from the Rhyme and Reason series.com. A lady I met who's from uh, Tulsa, who is a tremendous uh, writer, writes books, one for a children's books from every book of the Bible, and they rhyme. They're, it's rhyme and reason uh, series.com. And she's already written uh, six whole books, and it covers the book in an overview rhyme. And these illustrations came from David Wilson, who works with her on those projects. Really good. I've got several in here uh, this week. So, up to verse uh, seven Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asa. Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat. 
Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzzah. Uzzah, the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Notice we got the brown connection. We got the covenant connection going through the lineage here, person by person. Then we go to Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, verse 10. Manasseh, father of Ammon. Ammon, the father of Josiah. Josiah, the father of Jehoiakim and his brothers, born at the time of the exile to Babylon. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Good King Hezekiah had a very bad son named Manasseh. And uh, he even was appointing witches and warlocks in the, uh, in the kingdom authority places for judges and, and governors. And uh, uh, remember, Hezekiah was told he was going to die. And uh, Nathan the prophet went, went and told him that. And Hezekiah prayed to God to give him more time. And Nathan went and turned around and came back to him and said, well, God gave you 15 more years. During that 15 years, he had Manasseh as a child. If he hadn't gotten the extension on his life, Manasseh had never been born. Manasseh was very evil, and Manasseh led the whole nation into idolatry, appointing witches and warlocks and putting the uh, Baal and Asherah pole in the temple, which was just an abomination. And he uh, was led away into captivity in Babylon. Also, during the extra 15 years Hezekiah lived, uh, a Babylonian representative came to visit, and Hezekiah showed him all the gold in the temple, everything he had. And uh, that was what led to their wanting to come invade and take it all. They saw how much there was. So it uh, been better if he'd have died when he's supposed to have. I don't want to live any longer than God wants me to live. I found that very interesting. So in the, the second uh, section of that timeline, we got David, Solomon, Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, uh, Joram, uh, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, good king Hezekiah, bad son Manasseh, Ammon, and Josiah. And we're up to verse 12. After the Babylonian exile, Jehoiakim was the father of uh, Shealtiel. Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abiud. Abiud was the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Achim. Achim was the father of Eli Elihud. Then uh, verse 15, Elihud was the father of Eliezer. Eliezer, the father of Mathan. Mathan was the father of Jacob. Jacob, father of Joseph the husband of Mary, and Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. So again, we have the confirmation Jesus is the Messiah, and it's green because that was a prophecy. We still have the brown uh, lineage for covenant connection, and then we have Mary showing up in gray again in this uh, family tree uh, that, uh, that Mary's a woman. So we have the gray color I use for women in the Bible. Uh, again, unusual for a woman to be named in the lineage. Women didn't count in the lineage and, and weren't listed uh, according to Jewish uh, tradition. So the last section of the, the uh, timeline leading up to Jesus went from Josiah, Je uh, Jeconiah, uh, Sh Shield Hill, Zerubbabel, Abihud, Eliakim, Azor, Zadok, Achim, Eliud, Eliezer, uh, Mathan, Jacob, Joseph, and then Jesus. And then in verse 17, it says, all those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. So along the way in my, in my uh, slides, I'll have uh, uh, blue, oh goodness, they're telling me I need to upgrade my account, stay with free. Uh, they're going to cut me off. Tracy, we may have to uh, do this in two parts if they cut me off. Uh, specifically, 14 were mentioned. Not about 14. It's 14. 14 from Abraham to David, 14 from David to Babylon exile, 14 from Babylon exile to the Messiah. Um, symbolic language uses adjectives like as and like and about. So that seems to me that it's making literal statements, which is historic genealogy. Uh, and I would just suggest to you that doubting the literal genealogy doubts Jesus. And that's a dangerous place uh, to be. Um, here's the prayer I would pray for that, that verse. Uh, Lord, I know the Bible's full of symbols and parables and hidden meanings. So I need your help in knowing what's literal and what's a symbol. Grant me discernment in this important area. Give me faith and understanding. In Jesus' name. Steve. Yes. We can always end this meeting and you can come back on on the same link and get another 40 minutes if okay. you need. All right. So, there's always a way around. I've got, 
Yeah, I've only got eight eight minutes left. I'll watch that and do. It's the same. It's the same meeting every time. So it's the same code. So people just click right back on the link. Okay. We'll we'll uh, let's go eight more minutes and then we'll we'll do that. We'll end and come back. Okay. This section is about the birth of Jesus, uh, starting in verse eighteen. Um, Jesus is the Messiah, which it's mentioned a couple times already. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. Verse eighteen. It also says that Mary was his virgin mother. Um, I'm in a uh, preacher's group uh, that's a private group, and there are six or 700 preachers in it nationwide. Recently, they have discussions. I watched to see what they discussed. Recently, there was a big discussion about, uh, well, many people in my church don't believe in the virgin birth anymore. Should I be concerned about that? And the consensus from all these preachers was, no, don't worry about it. It's not a salvation issue. And I would contend it's a, it's a foundational issue. Uh, if we don't trust God in Matthew 1 and Genesis 1, how are we going to trust him about eternity in heaven and, and forgiveness and other things? So I think uh, the fact that the Bible teaches that Mary was a virgin, either you believe it or not, it's a pillar of the faith, so to speak. Mary is uh, Jesus's virgin mother. Um, also, verse 18, we see here the Spirit enabled Mary's pregnancy. In the bottom left-hand corner, I've got a little symbol uh, Holy Spirit. Things I noticed about the Holy Spirit, I put that little symbol on, and you'll see it uh, throughout. I'll try not to miss any that, that have that. And and when you when you compile the list, you you kind of find out that uh, there's a whole lot of things that the Holy Spirit is active at work doing in the life in the past and in the present. And so um, the Spirit enabled uh, Mary's pregnancy. So she became pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Also in verse 18, it also talks about uh, the Holy Spirit being powerful in that same verse, the power. Uh, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is, is powerful. So here's how I might pray uh, that, uh, that verse. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit and your ability to make Mary pregnant with your only son. I praise you for your Holy Spirit and your ability to uh, make Mary pregnant with your only son. Thank you for sending him as our Messiah, Savior, Lord, and Master. Help me to yield to him in every, every day of my life. Um, verse uh, 19. Uh, one thing we see is Joseph was a kind and good man. He was, he was her fiancé at the time. He was a kind and good man. Also, he was sensitive and thoughtful. Uh, he did not want to disgrace her publicly. You know, he was going to put her away uh, privately. An engagement was considered to be married already, even though they haven't uh, come together. It was, it was a, a permanent, considered to be a permanent relationship. And so he was sensitive and thoughtful to be kind enough to say, well, I'm just going to quietly walk away from this. And, and uh, I don't know what's happened here, but I'm going to leave her. And, and so that's interesting about this. Also, there's a whole lot of um, uh, talk today about social injustice. And so I've, I kind of have, you'll see a little side study as we go through about uh, what I call social injustice. And we, I want to focus on, we see things like this, I want to focus on the cause of it and the biblical response to social injustice. Uh, I think what you'll see as we go through the New Testament in a lot of different chapters is that the, the biblical response to social injustice justice is, is to uh, help people where you are. Be a, be a good Samaritan to whoever's around you. Not go try to change the government. Go try to wipe out poverty. Or go try. That's, not, that, that's not anywhere in Scripture. Jesus said we'll always have the poor. That doesn't mean we shouldn't help the poor. But the, the focus should be on evangelism to Jesus more than it should be on a social injustice. In this case, Mary's premarital pregnancy was a disgrace. You know, uh, verse 19 discusses it. Joseph did not want to disgrace her publicly. So this, this social injustice was caused by God or by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible response is, you know, that's his plan. Patiently endure. Um, not, that's not fair. We should have that changed. Uh, and you see that all the way through on social injustice issues. We'll talk more about that as we go on. Verse 19, I might pray like this. Lord, help me to live with whatever disgrace you choose for me that brings you glory and honor. Give me patient endurance to accomplish your purposes for my life each day. We should be submissive like uh, Mary was. Verse 20, uh, Joseph weighed his options. He considered this. You know, he can, he can go two ways right now. In fact, there's nuances even to either way. But he, he weighed, he thought about it. And so here's Joseph in the middle of making consideration about what to do. And God sends an angel in his dreams. And you'll see a little angel in the left-hand corner at the bottom, too, a little symbol of an angel. It's a, it appeared to him in a dream. And so dreams, uh, you'll, you'll see, also are, are prophetic uh, in the Bible. 
you know, go move away. Herod's going to kill babies. You'll see these dreams. You'll, you'll see that, that God communicates through dreams and angels are his, uh, often his choice of communication. He spoke directly to Saul, but most of the time we see him sending an angel to do that. So again, blue for angels and Holy Spirit and, and uh, God sending is, is enacting his plan. That's a red to me. That's red spiritual warfare to me. He's, his plan is going to overcome Satan's plans for evil and to kill, steal and destroy. And then dreams are part of how he does that. So God knows Joseph is, uh, is considering uh, what to do. And he sends an angel to help in that consideration. And uh, so an angel appeared and we need to know the difference between fallen angels and, and uh, God's angels. And we need discernment for that. An angel appeared in a dream. We have a lot of people with nightmares. I can tell you, God doesn't send nightmares. And we'll talk about that more in the spiritual warfare uh, seminar that we'll start um, uh, at the end of the month. Uh, we'll do one of those a month too. But we need to know the difference. So we need to pray for discernment. Then in, also in verse 20, it says, Joseph descended from David. Well, that's another uh, indication of a fulfillment of prophecy. He's going to be descendant of David. And Joseph is his father. and descendant of David. Now, Joseph's not really his father. And so to make sure that that was uh, taken care of, Mary is also in the lineage of David. And you see that, in, I think, in, in Luke. But uh, descended from David, uh, David and Joseph are covenant people with the brown and descended as, a, you know, again, he's the Messiah and it was predicted and he was going to be descendant of David. So that's a fulfillment of prophecy and a literal fulfillment, as you can see. Uh, also in verse 20, God wanted Joseph to, to marry Mary. <laughs> Sounds we're, we'll just weird to say that, but... Joseph and Mary are covenant people, and God wanted them. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. It'll be okay. Um, and that brings up the Holy Spirit again. The Holy Spirit fathered Mary's baby. The child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Um, I might pray that verse like this. Um, Lord, thank you for using Joseph, a man who carefully considered their engagement situation and was willing to stay with Mary to be an earthly father to Jesus. Help me to follow your lead, even to places I don't really want to go, in Jesus' name. Okay, let me, uh, everybody sign off, and we'll sign back in for a new 40 minutes so we can finish the, the, uh... Steve, wait yes. a second. Okay. It might extend you. So, you know, usually it'll send something to your email saying you've been extended 40 minutes. All right, I don't uh, have my so... email turned on. I would just I would just wait it out and okay. see what happens. Just keep going, right. and if it does cut off, everybody come back. <laughs> okay. All right, sounds good. We'll keep going. Um, Twenty one. Mary was to have a baby boy. Uh, again, we have a prediction, a, a prophecy, so it's green. Uh, back to your screen share, Steve. Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I lost it. Where am I? Here we go. Screen share. <laughs> I'm learning. You got to give me time now. I'm learning. Thank you all for being patient with me. Uh, Mary was to have a baby. Uh, prophecy. She will have a son. She was to have a baby boy. Verse 21. Joseph uh, was to name Mary's baby boy Jesus. You are to name him Jesus. Name above all names. So again, we got the green, the prediction. Um, Jesus was to save people from sin. Uh, the people he's going to save are going to be covenant people. And we'll, we have a study on covenants that we're going to expand on as we go along, but he saves the covenant people. Saving from sin is red. That's a warfare issue. 